Thank you for listening to the Hope Church Podcast. We hope that this message inspires you and encourages you in your walk with Jesus. For more information and resources, visit hopeboon.com. You know, I thought about that song and, and I was thinking about my whole life and I was thinking about how I used to be in politics. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, and it doesn't matter. It's really not that big a deal. But there was a time, and I can remember when we were in, in, our, in a meeting, and we had this guy walk in with a very expensive suit on and a briefcase. And when those guys show up, usually that's trouble. And so we go through the meeting, and, and it really wasn't that, that big of a deal. I mean, he just told us what we were going to do and what we were not going to do and this kind of thing because we had chosen to put in God we trust in our school systems on the wall. Well, it didn't really scare me that much. And now, several years later, 20-some years later, I'm riding with some of the roughest of the rough bikers that there are in the country. And you guys would know the names of the clubs if I shouted it out. But those guys don't scare me. But you know what? The still, small voice of God will put me on my knees like that. And never says a word. And never says an audible word, but He just speaks to my heart and He can put me on my knees. God is so good. Um, turn in your Bibles with me, if you would, please, to Luke chapter 19. There's a little guy by the name of Zacchaeus that we're going to talk about today. Uh, let me do this while you guys are turning. I want to say thank you to Josh, uh, Pastor Josh, for giving up his pulpit. For a pastor to put faith in somebody else to stand here and proclaim God's Word is a big deal. And I thank Josh for that. Uh, Josh does a wonderful job. He is an eloquent speaker. He does his homework. He knows the Bible inside and out. So I'm telling you today, if you're an English teacher, I am going to rock your world because I'm nothing like Josh. Okay? Um, so I praise him and I thank him. He's a good guy. He really is a good man. Um, Luke chapter 19, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. He, all right, now that's a capitalized H there, so you know that's Jesus, okay? He entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. This is the New American Standard, so I don't know what you're used to reading, but that's where we are. There was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, but was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree in order to see him, and that's capitalized again so you know that's Jesus, for he was about to pass through that way. And Jesus came to the place, and he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for today I am to stay at your house. And he, small capital H there, notice that, who is that? That's Zacchaeus, hurried down and came and received him, capital H, that's Jesus again, gladly. And when they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying that he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, behold, Lord, if my, of my possessions, I will give half of my possessions, I will give to the uh, let me back up and start over. Zacchaeus said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, but before we do, I would like for you to ask a prayer for yourself today. Ask God to show you where you stand with Him. The message that I'm going to bring to you today, I believe, is a message that no matter where Jesus is in your life, it is designed to move Jesus forward in your life to the prominent place that He belongs as Lord of your life. 
And so I want you to pray for yourself and ask God, God, where do I stand with you? Where does Jesus stand on the throne of my light, on my heart? Okay, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of it. We thank you that it's alive and that it's sharp and that it speaks to us continually. Lord, we praise you that Jesus came, that we might have a relationship with you. And it's in his precious name we pray. Lord, I pray that the the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth today would honor and glorify you, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. This morning, we want to talk about uh, this little guy named Zacchaeus, but but I'm going to share a story with you that I promise you've never heard before. I want to share a story with you and I promise you it's true, and I'll give you some addresses to some of the stories and addresses, I mean, the, where they're located in the Bible. And I want you to take these addresses down as, as I share with them. Uh, Tim and I have worked together. He's going to put them up on the, the, the screen here in just a minute as we move along. But I want you to think about these things. These are not parables, okay? Parables were stories that Jesus told that have a heavenly meaning, and he mixed it with something that we could understand. These are not parables. These are actual lives of people who Jesus radically changed. Now, I've got a a tattoo of a lightning bolt on one of my arms, and that lightning bolt literally means the change that comes when Jesus comes. Lightning hits something that's never the same. When Jesus hits your life, it's never the same. Today, I want you to read these stories with me and listen to this story that I'm about to share with you and and realize that these are not parables or they're they're true stories that actually happen. So we open up the scriptures and we see that Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Zacchaeus did not have a salary per se, but uh, Zacchaeus charged money and collected taxes He paid the government, he paid Rome what they demanded, and he kept the difference. Sometimes it was quite a bit more than he should have collected. So that's why when the the Pharisees and and the Sadducees looked at him, they considered him a sinner because they considered what he was doing was stealing money from people. Some of the guys uh, in this story were some of the most religious people that ever walked the streets of Jerusalem in their own mind. Jesus scolded them from time to time. And when we look at these folks, and and you can see that their anger burned against him. When they called him in verse 17, uh, they began to grumble and say that he has gone to stay with the sinner. Aren't you glad Jesus hung out with sinners? Aren't you glad that Jesus hung out with the sinner that's sitting in your seat that looks back at you in the mirror every day? The thing, one thing that's wrong with our churches today is that we have in our minds that we're so holy and so righteous that we can pick and choose who comes to our churches. What music we have to sing what we have to wear to church. And when we get to that point, we're wrong. Anybody can come and be a part of this church. Anybody has just as much a right straight out of prison to come and sit in that chair as I do. Any addict in this country has the same right to come and sit in that chair right there just the same as I do. Because Jesus Jesus loves them just as much as he does me. Or you. So at the time... It was time for Zacchaeus to come uh, and, and collect his taxes. Now, some of you kids have learned a story or learned a song, and I'm not going to sing it to save you from all that grief. But there's a song, and it goes something like this. And my kids learned it back when they were in, in school. And it says, uh, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. Zacchaeus climbed up in a sycamore tree so that Jesus he could see. That's exactly where we're going today. Now, it came time for for Zacchaeus to collect taxes. Zacchaeus went on down the street to the first house and knocked on the door. 
A woman came to the door. She was pale, yellowish in color. Her eyes were dark, and Zacchaeus could tell that she was very sick. He said, my name is Zacchaeus, and I've come to collect the taxes that you owe our government. The lady said to him, sir, I've been sick for 12 years. I've had an issue of blood, and I've spent all the money that I have trying to find a cure, and I'm no better than I was. And I have no money to pay my taxes. And you can find this story in Mark chapter 5, verses 24 through 34. And like I said, I, I pray that you'll make a note and, and do use these as your quiet time later. She, said, she looked at Zacchaeus and she said, Sir, if you would please give me 30 days of grace so that I can raise the money and pay the taxes that I owe our government. And Zacchaeus could see that she was weak and frail. And he said to her, I'll give you the 30 days of grace, but when I come back, the taxes that you owe will be due and payable in full. So Zacchaeus, feeling sorry for the lady, went on to the next house and collect the taxes that were due. He knocked on the door, and he could tell something was going on inside the house. There was some shuffling around and some noise there. In just a few minutes, a blind man came to the door. And Zacchaeus could tell that the man was blind because his eyes were clouded over like so many were during that time. And he said, my name is Zacchaeus, and I've come to collect the taxes that you owe our government. And Bartimaeus said to him, sir, I've been blind all my life. The only money that I can get is come, comes from begging. And you can find this story in Mark chapter 10, 46 through 52. He said, sir, I know I owe my taxes, but if you'll just give me 30 days of grace, possibly I might convince people to give more money so that I would have enough to pay my taxes. Now, it was obvious that the man was telling the truth, that he was blind, and he had heard stories of him. And Zacchaeus said, sir, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you those 30 days of grace. And when I come back, your taxes are going to be due and payable in full. So Zacchaeus went on to the next door. He knocked on the door, and he came to the, the lady came to the door wearing raggedy, torn, and tattered clothing. And she had two small children that were dressed in very worn clothing as well. And he said, my name is Zacchaeus, and I've come to collect the taxes that you owe our government. And the lady motioned to the cemetery up on the hill, and she said, the man who lives in that cemetery is my husband. You can find this, in Mark, this story in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. He is possessed by demons, and men, many men have tried to tie him with ropes and even chains. You can hear him screaming day and night, and he cuts himself with stones and bleeds. Sir, I know I owe my taxes, but please give me 30 days of grace, and somehow I'll work, and I'll get the money, and I'll pay my taxes. Now Zacchaeus heard the, the stories of the man, and he knew that he was a wild man, that he was possessed, and he knew that this lady could not pay her taxes, so he told her. I'll give you those 30 days of grace. But when I come back, your taxes will be due and payable in full. So Zacchaeus goes on to the next place of collection. And as he got close to the house, he could see a makeshift shift of, of wreath around the door. And he knocked on the door, and soon a lady dressed in black came to the door, and her eyes were swollen from weeping and crying, and her hands were shaking. And Zacchaeus said, are you the lady of the house? And she said, yes. Ma'am, I'm Zacchaeus, and I've come to collect the taxes that you owe our government. The weeping woman replied, sir, years ago my husband took sick, and not long after that he died and left me alone to raise our only son. And a few weeks ago my son got terribly sick, and yesterday he died too. I have spent all the money that I had trying to make him well, and now I have to bury him tomorrow. Could you please give me 30 days of grace? Zacchaeus was very confused at what was going on in his country at this time. and He said, yes, I'll give you the 30 days of grace, 
It was obvious that the lady had lost her son. And he felt distraught and bothered. And he said, I'll give you that 30 days of grace. So Zacchaeus left, murmuring to himself and thinking, how am I going to be able to collect these taxes? Well, 30 days goes by. Zacchaeus comes by and knocks on the house of the first door that he went to. A lady answered the door and her skin was bright and pink and her eyes sparkled and her face was a reflection of health. And Zacchaeus said, may I see the lady of the house? And she said, sir, I am the lady of the house. And he said, well, there must be some mistake because 30 days ago, when I came by this house, the lady was on the brink of death. And in fact, I thought she'd be dead by now. And the lady said, yes, I did have an issue of blood. But I heard that Jesus was passing by. And I thought, if I could just see Jesus, if I could just get to Jesus, I know I have enough faith that if I could just touch his garment, I could be healed. So I went to where he was and I reached out from the crowd and I touched him by the hem of his garment. And I was made well. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six 6, that without faith it's impossible to please God. But anyone comes that comes to him must believe that he is, and he will reward him earnestly if we seek him. I promised, I promised today if you need Jesus, that no matter where you are in your life, he will meet you where you are. Well, Zacchaeus was totally amazed. And he went to the next house and he knocked on the door. He said, um, Zacchaeus came to the house, he knocked on the door, and, and Zac the person came to the door. And he said, may I help you? And Zacchaeus said, my name is Zacchaeus, and I came to see the man of the house. The man replied, I know who you are, Mr. Zacchaeus. I recognize your voice. You see... I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. And Zacchaeus said, well, I don't see how this could happen because when, thir when I came by 30 days ago, your eyes were clouded over and, and the man that I saw was blind. The man said, yes, but one day Jesus passed by. And I cried out to him and he stopped. And he came over to where I was and he touched my eyes and now I can see. That happened to me one day. You know, I was standing in our high school lobby and a young man came across the lobby and asked me, if you were to die tonight, where would your soul be tomorrow? And I can relate to that young man. For the first time, I was able to see that in my life, I was lost and needed to be saved. So I went and talked to our pastor, and he helped me understand what it was like to have a relationship with Jesus. So I can stand here today, and I can say that I was blinded by sin. And I can relate to the man who said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Because that's where I was. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Now Zacchaeus went on mumbling to himself, not understanding how these things could be possible. So he went to the third house to collect the taxes. A man came to the door. He knocked on the door. And a man came to the door and he said, Sir, I'd like to see the lady of the house. And the man said, Just one minute. So he came back with the lady to the door. She had a nice new dress on and two little children with big smiles and a gleam on their faces that was hanging on to her leg, smiling and laughing. And Zacchaeus said, uh, he was thinking to himself, it's about time this lady got a new husband to help her around this house. Seeing the puzzled look on his face, the lady said, Mr. Zacchaeus, I owe you an apology. You see, I told you when you were here the first time that nobody could help my husband. But one day, Jesus passed by. And that wild, demon-possessed husband that I had, Jesus cast the demons out of him into a herd of swine. 
And soon after my, that, my husband came home. And now I have a new husband, and my children have a new daddy. Thank God Jesus passed by that day. Thank God Jesus passed by my life one day. Now finally, Zacchaeus came to the last house, and he knocked on the door, and a little boy came to the door. Zacchaeus said, I'm looking for the lady who used to live here. And the little boy said, oh, sir, my mom still lives here. Zacchaeus said to him, well, I was here 30 days ago, and she told me that she only had one son, and he had just died. She does only have one son, he said. That's me, and I did die. While they, and I did die, but while they were carrying me to the cemetery, Jesus passed by. And when he was finished, there was no one left to bury. And I can relate to this young man as well. One of my favorite scriptures is tattooed on my arm permanently. I'm still witnessing to the undertaker, by the way. This is what I'm doing, planning on this. But it says, ex-dead man. And the scripture that says, goes with that is John 5, 24. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me shall have eternal life and will not come into judgment, but has passed from death unto life. I was there. I can relate with this young, this little boy who had passed from death unto life by the power of the Holy Spirit that's, in li that's alive within me, the same Holy Spirit that was alive within him. Zacchaeus collected the taxes, and he walked away very confused. How could these things possibly be? And right down the street a ways, he heard a large crowd. There was a boy passing by, and he said, what's going on down there? And the boy said to him, Jesus is coming this way. Jesus is coming this way. All of a sudden, Zacchaeus' heart began to pound because he thought to himself, all the miracles that he had just heard about had one common denominator, and that was that Jesus had passed by. So he got closer to the crowd, and he saw instantly that he couldn't see Jesus because he was too short and the crowd was too big. So he began to jump to try to see Jesus, and he couldn't see him. So he ran up on the side of the bank, on the side of the road, and he still couldn't see Jesus. And then he remembered, there's a sycamore tree that I just passed a little while ago. Verses 4 and 5, 4, 5, and 6 say this. So he ran ahead, and he climbed up into the sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. And Jesus came to the place, and he looked up and saw Zacchaeus, and he said, Hurry, come down for today. I must stay at your house. And he hurried down and received him gladly. Zacchaeus trusted Jesus that day. And I have to say to you that I believe that Jesus is passing by this way today. Have you trusted him? Do you know for sure, absolutely, positively for certain, that if you take your last breath today, that you'll be in heaven. It's possible because as Jesus passed by this way today, you can trust him as your Lord and your Savior. Well, Jesus walked beneath that tree and we know that, that he came down and, and he spent the day with uh, Zacchaeus and Jesus together. And we know that his heart was changed by verse 8. Because Zacchaeus told him, Lord, I'm going to give half away to the poor, and if I've defrauded anybody anything, I'll pay him twice or three times, four times as much. We know that his heart was changed. Jesus is walking by this way today. Is he calling you to come spend some time with him? To spend eternity with him? And you say, well, Keith, I really haven't done anything that's it's all that bad. Well, we still have to trust Jesus regardless of what kind of life we've lived. The same hell waits for all of us. The only thing that counts toward our going to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ and His marvelous grace. That's the only thing that counts. Just like when I give my credit card to my wife, 
she charges all that stuff to my card. All of your sin is charged to Calvary. All of your sin is paid for at Calvary. In full, complete, and whole. Have you been saved by His marvelous grace? Then the first chapter of Ephesians tells us that when we trust Him as our Lord and Savior, that He seals us with His Holy Spirit. And He makes heaven our home. He seals us by His sovereignty because He is perfect. Will you trust His sovereignty today? I want you to read with me one more time verse 10 as we, as we get ready to close. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's the job of Jesus. And I assure you this morning, church, if He can fix me, He can fix you. And no matter where you are, you just take one step and He's there to meet you wherever you are. If you're here this morning and you're sure that you know the Lord as your Savior and you've been saved and you know heaven's your home, then the second thing I would, would question you and, and challenge you to in is, is to put Jesus where He deserves to be. Make Him Lord of your life. Move Him closer to the throne where He belongs of your heart. This morning, if you would please stand with me. Even though we can't see Jesus like Zacchaeus was able to see Him, He's passing by this way this morning. Will you trust Him? Will you believe in Him? Will you take Him as your Savior? Will you make Him Lord of your life? And as we pray and as every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, I want to ask you, if you're here and, and you're not sure that heaven's your home, would you slip up your hand for me this morning? I'd like to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to come to you or call you out this morning. But if you think you need to trust Him as your Lord and your Savior, just raise your hand. And if you're here this morning and God may be calling you to something. Jesus may be calling you to something special. Maybe it's to teach Sunday school. Maybe it's to lead a small group here at the church or get involved somehow. And it may be even a bigger thing. He may be calling you to the mission field somehow, some way. Would you slip up your hand? I'd like to pray for you as well. Thanks again for listening to the Hope Church Podcast. Our church exists to see people from all walks of life know Jesus, connect and grow, discover their purpose, and make a difference in this world. If you would like to connect with us further, or if you need prayer or assistance, please visit us at hopeboon.com, where Jesus loves you, we love you, and your life counts.